Tonight, the lid comes off on another Big East basketball season. It's the opener for the DePaul Blue Demons and the Pitt Panthers. A fresh start for DePaul, who went winless in the league last year, while Pitt hopes to recapture some of the magic from a season ago. Welcome to ESPN News coverage of college basketball. Tonight, we're at the Peterson Event Center at the University of Pittsburgh. The new year doesn't ring in until Friday, but the Big East starts a new year tonight. It's the 7-5 DePaul Blue Demons and the 10-2 Pitt Panthers. Happy holidays. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Pittsburgh. Alongside my partner, Bob Wenzel, I'm Clay Matvick. And a fresh start. We start anew here in the Big East season for two teams who went in completely different directions a season ago. DePaul needs a clean slate. Yeah. They were 0 for the league last year. Their best player is back, Matt Coshwell, 6'10", 255. This is his fourth game, and this is very important. He's recovering from a foot injury. And for Pittsburgh, they lost uh, their entire first team, and, and those guys were fantastic players, Dewan Blair, Sam Young, LeVance Fields, and Jermaine Dixon now is back, and Gilbert Brown. So Jamie Dixon, for the first time, has his complete roster intact. Some last-minute news for DePaul as we get ready to start this game, but it doesn't affect your star watch. Will Walker is still in there. Yeah, he's suffering from a fever, but I guarantee you the leading scorer will be in the game. Brad Wanamaker, one of those blue guys that I really love, he had a double-double the hard way. Ten rebounds and ten assists in his last game. All right, here looks uh, a look at the starters for Jerry Wainwright's DePaul Blue Demons. Still very young team. Point guard Jeremiah Kelly joins Mike Stovall in the backboard. Stovall starting in place of Walker. Wallace, Hill, and 6'10", Matt Coshwell. His second game back after missing eight with that injured foot. For Pitt, it's Ashton Gibbs, the leading scorer for the team at over 16 points per game. Jermaine Dixon, Wanamaker, Nasir Robinson, and Gary McGee up front. And we should see a lot of Gilbert Brown, as you mentioned, go. Gilbert Brown was out because of academics, was not able to practice with the team, but he played in their last game, didn't miss a shot. That's a good start for him. There's a look at Jerry Wainwright in his fifth year as head coach at DePaul. Good runs at Wilmington and Richmond before coming back to his native Illinois. But it's been a rough road at DePaul in those five years. And his counterpart, Jamie Dixon, National Coach of the Year a season ago. Unbelievable success for Dixon. Four years the assistant to Van Halen, seven years the head man here at Pittsburgh. What a rejuvenation of a program under those two guys. We're ready to go at the Peterson Event Center. Pitt in white, DePaul in blue. Driscoll, Perone, and Haney the officials. And this is a tough place to win a game if you're coming in here as a visiting team. 29 straight victories for the Panthers. That's the second most in college basketball behind the number one team in the land, Kansas. And we're underway in the Big East season. And Pitt controls the opening tap. Robinson works it on the perimeter for Wanamaker. Down low for Jermaine Dixon. They are happy to have him back. And Pitt scoring right away. It's an early lead for the Panthers. Nice play out of the double team. Find the open man. Use of clock important for the Blue Demons. They are the underdog clearly in this game. You want to run that shot clock down. Get it close to the basket. Turnaround jumper is off for Eric Wallace. And the rebound in the hands of Gibbs. Quickly into the front court. It's Wanamaker. 2-0 Pittsburgh here early. Another jump shot here. Jermaine Dixon, it's off. And the rebound comes down for Kelly. Here's a look at the keys to the game. Well, Koshwell to the rescue. The big man's got to play a big role, and it must be a low-scoring game. They almost beat Tennessee, lost by four, and those two things were present in that game. Koshwell makes a shot, and then, of course, the game was in the 50s. For Pittsburgh, they got to play their normal game. Use of their depth, very important, and they are the Scrooge on defense. They do not let you score. Koshwell's basket ties it up. Now Robinson trying to answer back. Can't hit, but McGee there to clean up. What a transformation, huh? McGee never played hardly at all last year. One point a game. This year, seven points, seven rebounds a game. 
opportunity knocking for that guy. That's the kind of shot he'll take, too, in close. He's hitting 73% from the field. <laughs> Here's an outside shot that's off for Stovall. In transition, here come the Panthers. Good pass down low. Robinson with the finish. Will Walker, the leading scorer for DePaul, has a fever. He's not in the game right now. He averages 16 a game. He's been in the 20s four times. They need him desperately in this kind of a game. Pip leads this game 6-2 in the early going. DePaul went 0-18 in Big E's play last year. Trying to get out to a good start on the road tonight. They've got their hands full. On the block, a little strong and off for Eric Wallace. Trying to keep it alive is Koshwa. His pass strip and a turnover. Here comes Pitt. Pitt so far is being very, very good in transition. Guys keeping their head up. And Nasir Robinson, the way he scores, he's one of those glue guys. Run the floor, guys will find you. You get it close into the basket. That's how you shoot a high percentage. What they say about Robinson, not a great shooter, but he's got all those intangibles. That's why I see so many minutes. I gotta tell you, he's gonna see fewer minutes now that Gilbert Brown is back. He and Trevon Woodall are gonna be the two guys who see fewer minutes with Dixon and Brown, the more experienced players. Haven't seen Brown yet. He wears number five for Pitt. Here's a foul on DePaul. It's not Jer Jeremiah Kelly. And here's what's at stake tonight. As we talked about, DePaul trying to get out to a great start. And Pittsburgh just unbeatable in recent years at home. The peak, a very, very tough place to play. 6-2. About three minutes into this game. Wanamaker across the lane to McGee and has it taken away by Wallace. <laughs> Jeremiah Kelly, the young point guard, and there's a turnover on the Blue Demons. Well, Devin Hill for Jerry Wainwright, when he mixes him with Matt Koshwell, that's a pretty good size. Two six nine guys, Devin very thin, Koshwell the thick variety. They can get that thing going together. You know, Hill is only a sophomore, so they've got some bright future in the paint. And Devin Hill back bigger and stronger this year. Spent a lot of time in the weight room during the offseason. On the block, there's some contact. Actually stepping out of bounds in the turnover for Pitt. Well, you think about three guys on Pitt's team. Ashton Gibbs goes from averaging four points a game to 16. McGee goes from zero to seven. And Wanamaker goes from six to 13 from last year to this year. Their opportunity is now there. Blair is gone. Fields is gone. Sam Young is gone. So these guys are stepping up, and they are now Pitt's core. Chance to come into their own. Here's Koshwal. To the point, Eric Wallace falling away a little strong. Good rebound there by Ashton Gibbs. 6-2, but he went up like a 6-9 guy. <laughs> a lot of blockouts right there by the guys in the white. Here's Gibbs launching a three, falls down, no foul call. He's off, and here comes DePaul back. Big time rebound there by Wallace, huh? He's a transfer from Ohio State, so he knows about playing in the big time. What they've got to get Wallace to do is start hitting free throws. <laughs> we'll talk more about DePaul's issue at the free throw line when we come back. 6-2, Pitt leads early. Pittsburgh out to the early lead, 6-2 at home. 15.55 to go in the opening half. Talked about Jermaine Dixon and Gilbert Brown being back, and Gilbert Brown yet to see the floor, but they can't wait. Well, first game, 18 minutes. Two for two from downtown, four for four from the field, did not miss a shot in the game, one for one from the foul line, displaying some dexterity with his passing, and then knocking in threes from the perimeter. They need him, and he is happy to be back. Oddly enough now, when you are a guy who has academic issues, you're not allowed to practice with the team. So he had a perfect night coming in <laughs> against Ohio, and he'd only practiced for two days after the semester break. So finally, Pitt has its team back intact. In spite of it all, went 10 and 2 during non-conference play. Not bad. The one stinger, the loss to the Hoosiers, which they're going to try and make up as the season goes along. Yeah, that, that one hurt them. The other loss was Texas, which Texas has beaten everyone. But the Big East has now begun, so lots of lots of tough competition now. The very quick Jermaine Dixon with the steal. Under 15 and a half to go here in the opening half. 
Working on the corner, here's Brad Wanamaker. He'll drive. Had it partially blocked by Wallace. Good putback there by Dixon. Well, Dante Taylor very much involved right there, the freshman. Quick steal and a score. And now, time out for Jerry Wainwright as Pittsburgh very, very alert at the defensive end. Four for Gibbs now. Jerry Wainwright trying to square things away with 15.06 to go in the half. Just a poor start for DePaul here in the first game of the Big East season. But Will Walker right there in your screen, Clay, is the guy that has to come into this game. They said he had a little bit of a fever. He is a big-time player, and he's coming into the game right now as we speak. Jerry Wainwright sending him to the scorer's table. 16 points a game for Walker. Had a slight fever, as he explained to us before the game, but without him, they really struggle. Only two points in the game. Went over 1,000 career points earlier this month. Fourth all-time in career threes at DePaul. And Gilbert Brown. We're still waiting to see his entrance into the game for Pitt. Here's Koshwal on the block. Turn around, no good. Rebound brought down by Dante Taylor. Koshwal getting a lot of attention from the Pitt defense. They know he's a star player. 16 and 13 averages in his four games this year. Four turnovers and one field goal. Not going to get it done for DePaul on the road. Falling away. Dixon gets it to go down. Jermaine Dixon is on the board with his first basket. You know, when we were talking to uh, Jamie Dixon, the coach, asking him about Jermaine Dixon, the player, I asked him what percentage he could put on it, and he really hesitated. He's certainly not at 100%, but he's the lone returning starter for this team. And he was out with a foot injury that was broken twice in the last six months. They have some experience with foot injuries here. LeVance Fields, their starting point guard last year, had one. So Dixon getting good minutes starting now. He is their leading player returning. He was expected to be back for the start of the season when he originally broke that foot in July, but then broke it again in August, as you mentioned. And that really set him back. Koshwell's timing is off, isn't it? You know, he hasn't played in a long time with his foot injury. Close to the basket shots, not drawing iron there. Wanamaker kicks it out on the perimeter. Here's Trevon Woodall. Woodall's minutes are going to be affected now, too, with the return of the two-star players. Yeah, especially Jermaine Dixon. Trayvon started, was averaging 30-something minutes a game. That's way too much for a freshman in this system. Trying to add to the 10-point lead and bang. Ashton Gibbs, his first three of the night, he has seven. Led the league in field goal percentage from three last year at 44%. He and Walker were the two best in the league. Gibbs really the main scorer on this team from the perimeter. 13-0 run for the Panthers. That is off for Jimmy Drew. And, and uh, it's a 10-point game now as Drew stops the bleeding for DePaul. Well, Drew just became eligible. He played for Southeast Missouri State, just became eligible as a transfer. And uh, Jerry Wainwright said, if we play horse, he can win. So he's a shooter. Stolen away by the big man. Here comes Koshwal in transition, and he's fouled from behind. And it's on Gilbert Brown. First on Brown, 13 foul. All right here, racing up the floor. When your feet get tangled up, this was not intentional, but it's an automatic foul in referee school when you trip somebody and he goes down. Automatic must be called, just like two hands on the dribbler on the perimeter. One well, of the reasons that Pitt is so happy to get Brown back is his experience. And again, intangibles. He's a junior, but this is his fourth year in the program. Yeah. He knows the offense. He knows everything inside now. Yeah, he does. And, and I think he remembers the defense better than Jamie Dixon thinks he remembers the defense so far. Josh Wall, double triple. Fifth turnover for DePaul. Men's College Hoops continues Tuesday night. First at 7 Eastern, it's LSU and Xavier in Cincinnati. Then at 9, Belmont taking on Sharon Collins and the number one Jayhawks. College Hoops on the U. That's tomorrow night. Kansas is way, way, way good. Oh, yeah. One and two in the Big 12. Kansas and Texas. There's a basket for Gilbert Brown, his first points. Maybe Belmont has some magic. They almost beat Duke in the tournament two years ago. Belmont, the last team to win a game in non-conference play against Pitt at this building. 
There's a basket for DePaul. Well, Devin Hill showed a nice little turnaround jumper right there. He's long and lean. He's got some game. Still learning, kind of in the developmental stage. Boy, this inside game is being dominated by Pitt. 10-0 in the paint, and it's a 10-point lead for the Panthers. Time out of the court, 11.50 to go in the half. Another good season for the Pitt football team. Day after Christmas at the Meineke Car Care Bowl, the freshman Dion Lewis played well, and it did come down to a field goal. Pitt wins it over North Carolina 19-17. And there's the Gatorade bat for Dave Wanstead. First 10 win season since 1981. Well, the good news for Dave is that Deion Lewis can't go pro after his freshman year in football, <laughs> so he will be back running the bat and running the football next year for the Pitt Panthers. Quite a freshman season for that young man. He lost their quarterback, Bill Stull. He is uh, out of eligibility, but that's going to be a good Pitt team coming back again in 2010. All right, DePaul down 10, 11.40 to play. And what have you seen here in the early going, Coach? Well, defense has been great. Walker is in the game right now and hasn't gotten a shot. They have got the ball to Koshwall, but Pittsburgh's made it tough on him there, giving him a lot of traffic to deal with on the interior. Here's Will Walker. He did not start because of a high fever, but came in fairly early. He's going to launch up a three, rattles in and out. Great block out right there on a mismatch. Gibbs blocked out the bigger Wallace. Gibbs led that under-19 Team USA team to a uh, gold medal in New Zealand, coached by Jamie Dixon. Great move by Jermaine Dixon. Well, and that's he's gonna what, go to the line. I'm sorry, that's what they do not have when this guy was out of the game. A slasher that can take the ball to the basket. He was coming into his own last year, and watch this move. Gets his shoulder down, jumps sideways to avoid the charge, makes the basket, keeps his head up, and then right to the free throw line. That's the second on Koshwall. Don't be deceived by these stats. This is only his fifth game, and in his first few games, he played, he had zero points, five points, four points, and then 14 in the last game. So his, his stats on the year are not indicative of the type of player Jermaine Dixon really is. Pittsburgh, biggest lead of the game, 20 to seven now. Walker inside, now they kick it out on the perimeter for Wallace, his three way off the mark. Yeah, that's not his game, he's kind of an interior guy. Pitt has respect for DePaul's defense, that's why they're rushing it up, trying to shoot quickly. Gibbs for three, his second. Are you kidding me? Did you see that shot? You talk about a quick release, wow. Ashton Gibbs. Now with 10, he's the first player in double figures tonight. Falling away and drawing the contact, there's Tony Freeland, the freshman from Los Angeles. Well, we got here at 5 o'clock today, and there was only one guy in the gym shooting, and that was Ashton Gibbs. The rest of the players for Pitt not out, DePaul not in the building at that time. So practice makes perfect, especially when you have great form like Gibbs has. Now DePaul... This has been their Achilles heel, the free throw line. Just 53% as a team coming in. Well, for DePaul to have a chance against Pittsburgh in this building, Jerry Wainwright would have to be at full throttle with all of his players, and clearly that's not the case with Walker a little bit under the weather and Koshwall just getting back from that uh, eight-game non-playing. Freeland hits them both. And Wainwright's top recruit this year, Tony Freeland. It's a good start to, for DePaul at the line. Tell you what, something that Jerry Wainwright has been losing sleep at night about, the, the, the trips to the line, 53% on the year. Yeah, that's not going to do it, especially when you're in a, in a position where you're playing against teams that are a lot stronger than you. You've got to be up in the 70s. Trayvon Woodall. Zone Here's defense Dixon. for the first time, 2-3 variety. Trying to force the outside shot, but very important to find Gibbs. There's Gibbs, trying to go over the top of the defense. Nice pass to Brown. You talk about a guy who's got some hops. You're looking at him, Gilbert Brown, and a great pass by Gibbs. 
Boy, Pittsburgh looks like a different team with Brown and Jermaine Dixon playing than they did two weeks ago. And look at the points in the paint. And that's not post-up points. That's cutting to the basket points. Chris Faber throws it up. It's strong. And Faber tries to get it back. And at the half-court strike, fans want it over and back. They don't get the call. And they wanted to travel also. Two gifts right there for DePaul. Nice pick and roll here. Look at this backdoor cut with the pass to Brown. Well, Gibbs gets crowded because it's a zone, and he makes a nifty pass. Brown simply moving well without the basketball. And when he gets close to the basket, watch out below. Terrific pass, great extension. Pittsburgh shares the basketball very, very well. That's why they won 31 games last year, 15 and three. Last year, that guy averages four. This year, 16. And Gibbs tonight, 10 points, three assists. He takes a seat on the bench. It's a 25-9 pit lead. You know, Ashton Gibbs has been in the 20s five times this year. He also took 25 shots against Indiana, trying to bring his team back. This guy has great game. He's going to be a superstar in the league. Stovall puts it in the corner. And it's a three on the money for Mario Stua. His first points, the former member of the Croatian national team. Basketball, a great sport in Croatia. Lots of those players playing in the NBA. Here's Dixon from the corner trying to answer back. No good, backside rebound, Freeland. The staple of Pittsburgh for many, many years has been the half-court defense. Great principles. Move your feet, stay between your man and the basket. Denial defense when you can. Everybody blocks out, five guys rebound. All of the good stuff. And the defense so far this year, real good for Pitt. 10 of the 12 opponents held to 60 or less. Seven on the shot clock, turnaround no good for Richardson. And up and in. Tony Freeland, he's got four. Yeah, well, they're, they're after it on the boards, at least. DePaul is showing part right here after getting hit in the mouth early in the game. They're trying to hang in, and that's what you would expect from a Jerry Wainwright team. Well, the bench for DePaul has uh, done most of the work here, the heavy lifting. <laughs> Here's Pitt now with an 11-point lead, seven and a half to go. Pitt picked ninth in the preseason Big East Bowl. Yeah, how about that, huh? Team this good, pick ninth. There are 11 teams in the Big East that have either zero, one, or two losses on the year so far. 11 of the 16 teams. Trayvon Woodall with their three. Five teams ranked in the top 13 in the nation. A great, great, obviously, basketball league. Freeland has it taken away. Woodall, good head man pass to Wanamaker. Little trampling music there. Brad got away with what I believe. And a timeout called by DePaul. Well, Trayvon Woodall is a freshman who was 30 minutes a game, and right here he gets his opportunity, knocks in one deep, and then on the fast break, this is what they love. Wanamaker took about 12 steps going to the basket there. That's legal in Europe, but not in the United <laughs> States. But it's a home game. Biggest lead of the game for Pittsburgh. It's a 16-point lead for the Panthers. And during the absence of Dixon and Brown, Wanamaker has emerged as a leader. We're seeing that continue here tonight. Oh, yeah. I tell you, Wanamaker, I love the guy. He's averaging almost 16 points in the last five games, shooting 50%. He's laughing at about the travel that he just got away with. Hey, log on to Facebook tonight. Sir GSPN, you become a fan. Post your Post your best college photos and comments. Show us your school spirit. It's at ESPNU Facebook. You got a Facebook page, Bob? No, I try to stay away from that. <laughs> You'd have too many hits. <laughs> People want to check you out. Look at that, 13 field goals, nine assists for this pit offense. Yeah, and they've made 10 out of their last 12. There's Will Walker rising up. His shot is off the mark. Chris Faber, the rebound, the putback. Nice, huh, Faber. He's getting into the action in there. The center from Palmdale, California. With the return of Koshwall, he did not play in the team's last game, but getting some minutes here early tonight. Yeah, Koshwall out of the game. He was a little stymied by 
Pitt's defense early. Back door, Wanamaker trying to return the favor. This time a Gee gets hacked. Oh. And with 6.18 to go, Eric Wallace picks up the personal. Big lead for Pitt. Pitt shooting a outstanding 72% from the field to start this game. They've got a big 14-point lead. Well, these are the teams in the Big East play ranked in the top 13. Syracuse, West Virginia, Villanova, Connecticut, Georgetown. What's interesting about this, Syracuse was picked to finish sixth in the Big East. They are now fifth in the country. And the other interesting thing, West Virginia starts five players, six, eight, six, nine. No point guards, no little guys. Everybody's the same size. Everybody plays inside and out. Very, very interesting team. It's gonna be another dog fight in the Big East. It gets underway for these two teams here tonight. This is Gary McGee, the 6'10 postman for Pitt at the free throw line. He's a 58% free throw shooter. Yeah, and you said he's 72% from the field, so that tells you he's most of the time dunking and taking layups, which is what you want a big guy to do. Well, he missed them both. And here comes to Paul, down 14. Speaking of Syracuse, the number five team in the country, as Paul's as mentioned, came out again today, and that's who Pitt has next. How do they match up? Well, that's going to be a war. There's no doubt about that. Pitt's next three games are at Syracuse, at Cincinnati, and at UConn. Stula knocking them in, huh? That's his second three off the bench. Stula with six, the former member of that uh, national team in Croatia. He has struggled from beyond the arc so far in his career, so this, again, a good start for him. Well, last year he played almost exclusively inside, very rarely took any outside shots, was a passer, a lane player. This year we're seeing a little bit different game from him. Nice movement side to side, makes the defense go side to side. When they do that a lot, then they're likely to make a mistake. McGee sets the pick for Gibbs. Four on the shot clock, Wanamaker travel. Sixth turnover for the Panthers. We're at the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh. It's the Big East opener for Pitt and DePaul. He's Bob Wenzel, I'm Clay Matvick. Last year, DePaul went 0-18 in Big East play. Pitt, of course, rattled off 31 wins and got a number one seed in the NCAA tournament and, and made it got, to the Elite Eight. Yeah, and they got knocked out by another Big East team when Scotty Reynolds made a twisting layup to end their season. Dixon hops in, short. Out of bounds, last touch by Pitt. You know what's amazing about Pittsburgh is their consistency of winning. They lose practically their whole team last year. Dewan Blair with the San Antonio Spurs. Sam Young averaged 19 a game. He's with Memphis. LeVance Fields, 270 assists, 70 turnovers. I mean, and Biggs is a, a very good substitute at the forward position, and yet they keep on winning, keep on winning, keep on reloading. That's a testament to the kind of program that they have here. Yeah, when we were talking with Jamie Dixon this week, yeah, they're picked ninth in the Big East, but he thinks they're gonna make another NCAA trip. Look at Stula, off the steal, lays it in. And He's he, got eight. And he went three quarters of the length of the floor with a left-handed dribble. Pretty skilled guy. He's the leading scorer tonight for DePaul. It's a 7-0 run for the Blue Demons. And they pulled it within nine. Yeah, and, and what happens in basketball, you know, you don't you don't win a game by 50 points usually. So what happens is there's always a letdown. The other team plays better when they get behind. They play more freely. And then, of course, there's a tendency to let down a little bit when you're ahead. Gibbs over Walker. Got it. That's a two for Ashton Gibbs. He's got a dozen. He's got an unusual delivery. You know, he gets that ball up to his head quickly. Usually you don't see him shoot off the dribble much, so we're seeing a little bit more out of Gibbs in this game. He's got a 27 straight free throws made streak going to you. Haven't seen him at the line yet tonight. Another miss for DePaul. Here comes Pitt again. Gibbs leading the charge. Alley-oop to McGee. That just failed to click. He hangs in there, goes up, had it stripped. Yeah, too much traffic. Nice D by DePaul. Flush for Mike Stovall, his first points. And a timeout called by Pitt with 3.25 to play in the half. Well, Ashton Gibbs right here puts the ball on the floor and pulls up for a jumper, Clay. This is not what he usually does. Nice head and shoulders fake, 
pulls up beautiful rotation on his shot whether he's on the move or whether he's standing still and then the answer at the other end Mike Stovall going in for a flush and that's why time was called by Jamie Dixon he does not like to give up easy baskets well, 9 2 DePaul run now first at 7 Eastern on Wednesday night you're going to see Albany take on Deion Thompson and the number nine North Carolina Tar Heels and at nine Eastern the South Carolina Gamecocks taking on BC it's college hoops on ESPN UHD on Wednesday for more information go to ESPNU.com now uh, Jerry Wainwright has to be happy with what he has seen from his team here in the last couple of minutes well, they're, they're a tough team, and they're a tough group, and he's a tough coach, so they stay with things. I don't think there's anything. You are going to see effort on the part of DePaul. Wanamaker can't find it. A couple of chances in close. Walker has to get off. They are very aware of him. They're not helping off him at all. He does not have the energy that he normally has. Walker has not taken a shot in the game. He averages 16. He's their leading scorer. Gilbert Brown for three. So off the front iron, no good. The rebound by Stovall. The Paul down nine. Well, they're trying to make it a game. I don't think there's any question about that. Walker trying to get a shot here. He trailed by as many as 16 here in the half. Now a foul on Woodall. And there's a timeout on the floor with two and a half to go here in the first half. Pitt with the lead. They've led from the outset, but to Paul keeping it close. Pitt Panthers trying to extend their 29 game home court winning streak so far so good in the Big East opener against DePaul Jamie Dixon now in his seventh year as head coach of these Panthers and you can see over the last nine years one of the best programs in the country you want some analysis on this Memphis of course has the best and of course they've had great players and but they are playing in a league that is not as good as the Big 12 or the ACC same thing with Gonzaga now both Memphis and Gonzaga also play tough teams outside of their conference that guy in your picture right there looks like he's got an Excedrin headache but he is one heck of a coach I'll tell you that you talk about starts to a career he is number one after six years in wins in the history of college basketball how about that not too bad. And how about this to fall three for three at the free throw line tonight. Yeah very unusual for them. Right guy shooting them here. Walker can make his. And he got them both. A little help from the rim. First points for Will Walker and Jerry Wainwright's club within seven. They were down by as many as 16 here in the half. Yeah and, and in the last seven possessions there's been two turnovers and one for five or six for Pittsburgh. So they have not been offensively efficient in the last three or four minutes of this game. On the baseline, nice move. That's pretty efficient. Brad Man. Wanamaker now with four. You talk about strength. Holy cow. I really like that guy. You know, I mean, he's sort of unsung. People don't talk about Wanamaker a lot in the league, but boy, he can do some damage. Jimmy Drew from way downtown, no good. Wanamaker now nine of 12 games, double figures. There from the corner, it's Wanamaker again, his first three. Talk about doing great things. Last five games, averaging 16 a game, 50% from three, almost six assists per game. You talk about a guy who's got game, it's Brad Wanamaker. First Wanamaker goes to the basket strongly, and look at this beautiful setup on the break. He knocks this one in from deep. The spacing was wonderful. This guy's a player. Roman Catholic High School, Philadelphia. Big, strong, 6'4", 220. He's got a lot that he can do out there on the floor. Very well-rounded game. And just like that, the lead back to 12 for Pitt. Yeah, that timeout was functional, wasn't it? Minute and a half to play here in the first half. Will Walker to Wallace. Over the double team, can't finish. And contact and a foul underneath. Wallace now 0 for 6 from the field for DePaul. Coming up at the half, ESPN News going to update you. They're going to preview the upcoming games here tonight. Highlights and stats from our first half here in Pittsburgh. Koshwell has only played nine minutes in this game. 
And of course, he had two personal fouls early. So a guy after he played three games, they played well in those three games. He sat out eight, he played one more. This is his second after that stretch. His timing is really not there. Wanamaker trying to take this game over. He is fouled going to the rack. And Brad Wanamaker, a 69% foul shooter, goes to the line. Let's talk about this guy's career. He comes in, doesn't play a lot because the team is so good. Last year, he becomes a guy who comes in off the bench and plays well, averages about six a game. This year, 13 a game, almost seven rebounds a game, and is a great assist guy, almost four assists a game. So he helps this team in every imaginable way. He can play the two guard spot. He can play the three spot. He's good in the break. He's good on defense. Kind of an unsung guy. He is rugged. Yeah, that makes sense. If he's from Philadelphia, <laughs> a lot of rugged guys come out of that town. What a pass. Woodall scores, and he'll go to the line. How about the smile on Trayvon? The little guy getting a pass to him going in among the trees right here. Good rebounding and a nice pass. He comes right down the middle. The big man to the point guard. Usually it's the other way around. First foul on Tony Freeland. And Trayvon Woodall will tow the line. Product of St. Anthony High School in New Jersey. Played for Bob Hurley. And you know you come out of there knowing how to play the game the right way. Well, no doubt about that. He's one tough kid. But. He's going to play less minutes now that Jermaine Dixon is back in the lineup, and that will make them a better team and him a better player. Hit one for six at the free throw line now. Things are kind of going the other way around. The ball hitting theirs. Hits nice. not. That's nice footwork right there by Devin Hill. He can get all the way across the lane in one step. Here's Woodall for Gibbs. Back for Woodall. Eyes up a three. In and out. Wanamaker has it swatted away. Fourteen point lead for Pitt half minute to go here in the half Walker number 30 the leading scorer with the basketball right here got to the free throw line and that's about it he's suffering from a heavy fever did not start and certainly not playing up to his capabilities right here if they score here at the end they will also have the ball to start the second half throws it away. <laughs> Empty possession for DePaul in the final seconds. Yeah, and, that, and what you want is to score in this situation and have the ball to start the second half, score again, make it a four-point swing. First turnover in almost seven minutes for DePaul, but it's a costly one. So with three seconds to go, it's the length of the floor for Pitt. What can they do? Well, you know, I mean, nothing right here. Little roundabout, throw it up there. DePaul, as you mentioned, 10 turnovers per game. They handle the ball pretty well. So Pitt with a pretty impressive first half, especially Wanamaker. Wanamaker, seven points, but they were loud points. When we return, ESPN News will get us caught up on today's sports action here in Pittsburgh. It's a 39-25 lead at the half for the Panthers in the Big East opener for Jamie Dixon and company. Pitt led by as many as 16 in the first half. They lead by 14 after break, 39-25. And this Big East opener for DePaul and Pittsburgh. Men's College Hoops continues Wednesday night with a doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, the Albany Great Danes take on the number nine North Carolina Tar Heels and Deion Thompson. Then at 9 Eastern, South Carolina goes to Boston to take on Boston College. Men's College Hoops on ESPN UHD. Wednesday night. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Brad Wanamaker coming off a double-double in his last game at seven in the first half. He and the Panthers lead it by a bunch at the break. Thirty-nine twenty-five. Pitt as we get ready to start the second half. Alongside Bob Wenzel on Clay Matfick. And Pittsburgh at times dominant. In that first half, DePaul made it a seven-point game late in the stages, but then a 7-0 run to end the half for Pitt. 
They're more talented. They have more depth. And we are wishing you happy holidays from ESPNU. But Pitt's defense is playing the part of Scrooge in this one. <laughs> Only 25 points for DePaul, shooting 34%. They are tightening the screws on DePaul. DePaul got good production from the bench, but it, it's got to come from some of the star players, especially Matt Koshwell. We have seen very little from him. He only played nine minutes. He was one for three. Will Walker, their best scorer, was 0 for 2 from the field. So those two players who are their star guys not doing much in this game at all. Partly Walker is because he's sick and partly Koshwell because this is his second game back after missing eight games. Let's uh, look at some of the highlights. Certainly Pittsburgh uh, getting some production from star guys like Ashton Gibbs. They were from everywhere. They are such a balanced team. Gibbs is one of the best shooters in the Big East Conference. Jermaine Dixon, a slasher with, uh, with the ability to take the ball to the basket. They're running the fast break. They pass the ball and share it. Wanamaker is having a great, great game. He's got 12 points. And the unselfishness very evident for Pittsburgh with their astute passing. And a pull-up J by Gibbs makes this a nice game for him so far. Gibbs 12 points in that first half. The only player in this game in double figures. Also six rebounds, so he's staring at a double-double. Well, he averages 16 a game, and of course, he is a prime time score. The surprise is that Mario Stula is at, he's got eight points two threes and a layup hasn't missed a shot and he only averages two points a game. So the star players for DePaul minus and missing in action in the first half. And DePaul will actually send Stula out to start. Well he deserves it guy played great in the first half. Knocked in two threes, made a steal, went the length of the floor with his left hand. He deserves more time. DePaul has gone over three minutes without a field goal. 7 0 run again to end the half for Pitt. Leaded by 14 here on the baseline. Up, no good for Koshwall. His first field goal attempt of the half is no good. Nice D by Gary McGee. He did a terrific job forcing a very difficult uh, attempt. Wanamaker to McGee and the hammer dunk. Wanamaker averages nearly five assists per game. I oh, think they're calling a technical foul hanging on the rim here. Right here, McGee goes hard to the basket. A little extra emphasis on that one. And of course, uh, this means two free throws at the other end for Walker. You know, we had a game earlier this year where Evan Turner, maybe the best player in the country, was injured on a play where he hung on the rim and fell directly to his back. Hopefully Turner will be back uh, within a couple of weeks, but dangerous plays when you're hanging on the rim. DePaul six for six at the free throw line tonight. McGee with that foul, that's his second. McGee, of course, uh, the cousin of Aaron McGee, who helped take uh, Oklahoma to the Final Four in 2002. Half minute in here to the second half. With Juan Blair gone, McGee's getting his chance. He's a starter and a very physical guy in the paint. Remember, he played against Juan Blair every day in practice last year. Koshwal lost the handle, kicks it out to Jimmy Drew, and it's a DePaul turnover. Interesting, Koshwal put the ball on the floor a little bit too much. You know, when he catches the basketball, probably be better for Jerry if he just read the defense and then made a quick move. As soon as he bounces the ball, he becomes 5'10 instead of 6'10. Koshwal entered the NBA draft last April and then pulled his name out in June. Wisely. Something that uh, Dar Tucker did not do, and I, I don't know if he regrets it or not. Well, he's in the D League right now, Dar Tucker, and it could have, certainly from DePaul's standpoint, he would have been a very welcome addition. Great, great athlete. There's Jamie Dixon, 11th year at Pitt, seventh as head coach. Led his team to a number one ranking last year, a number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Both of those for the first time in program history. With a win tonight, he'll move into second place on Pitt's all-time coaching wins list. That is off for Dixon, tapped up. McGee trying to handle it. It's knocked out of bounds. And DePaul will not get it back. It will belong to Pittsburgh. Well, one of the great things about Pittsburgh is they've always been and hung their hat on their defense and their rebounding. And when your offense goes, as it always will during the course of a season, if you can rely on those two things, you're going to be in every game. Wanamaker lost his dribble, gets it off for Gibbs. 
Off the mark, backside rebound, Koshwall. I'm impressed with Pittsburgh's passing. They share the ball very, very well. All five players able to give it up and find one another. Look at that, that pass hit. to Koshwall oh, oh, oh. from Walker. Well, those two guys were conspicuous in their absence in the first half in terms of their productivity. And right there, Walker to Koshwall should be a familiar saying to DePaul fans. Watch this one-handed pass. Great vision right between three players. And Koshwall makes the quick move right here. He does not put the ball on the floor, just goes right to the basket. That's what you want. First miss free throw of the night for DePaul. There's six of seven at the line. Wanamaker takes it himself high off the glass, and Walker clears for DePaul. Opportunity knocking for the Blue Demons. There's Drew, bounce pass, are going back into Koshwall. No touch. Kept alive here by Kelly. Here's Drew, dialing it up from three. No good. Great block out on the weak side by Wanamaker on a bigger player. You know, Wanamaker doesn't have the most points tonight, but he might be the MVP of this one uh, for good. He does everything, doesn't he? Dixon, in and out. McGee out of the game. He's been working hard against Koshwell. Dante Taylor now in, the freshman big man. Walker doesn't get the bounce. And Taylor gets the rebound. Highly regarded freshman. Learning the game right now for Pittsburgh. He's going to be a valuable player as the season progresses. First McDonald's All-American at Pitt since 88. Watermaker tries to get it out on the corner. He is fouled by Drew. Well, right here, you got the two star players. And look what they did in the first half. Four points each. Koshwall, normally 16, 15 a game. Walker's the leading scorer at 15. 0 for 3 and 2 for 6. That is not not good. You know, and, and part, partly the defensive pit has been aligned towards those two players. So you got to give them credit at the defensive end. It's not just that those two players aren't producing. They are being crowded a great deal by Pitt's D. Taylor tries to get it up on the putback as it's stripped. And here comes Walker again for DePaul. Drew inside. This is Faber. Good battle there with Taylor. And a foul here on DePaul. It's going to go against Chris Faber, his first. Well, Faber has been very, very aggressive in this game, and he's had some good things happen. Right here, he's in a crowd. He clearly pushes off with his left elbow. And, of course, no harm intended, but uh, Faber kind of learning his way a bit in the geography of the lane and when to put the ball on the floor, when not to, how to use your body in there. But he's a big body. He's going to be used in the Big East Wars this year. Faber comes out. Koshwall, after a quick breather, comes back in for the Blue Demons. 16.40 to play. Pittsburgh has, has led from the outset. Their offensive execution has been very, very good. Over 50% in the first half. That's what you want. They share the ball. Everybody handles and passes. They're shooting 50% right now. Here is Brown. That's off the mark. And Walker, I'll tell you, his rebounds are starting to pile up. Drew, baseline pass, Koshwall over Taylor, the right-hand hook, no good. And his sixth missed shots in a row now. And Pitt has missed its last six as well. Wanamaker, the free throw line for Gibbs, and finally, a field goal made for Pitt. It's four to four in the second half. <laughs> First field goal for Gibbs of the half. He's got 14 to lead everybody. Walker, the drive, high off the glass, no touch. And a foul at midcourt. It's going to be on Jimmy Drew. First on Drew for the Blue Demons. Ashton Gibbs is closing in on a season average of 16. That one gives him 14 points for the night. Back at the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. This place is eight years old. It's been sold out since it opened eight seasons ago. It holds 12-5, another great crowd here tonight. No doubt the students are gone, but they're here with us. There's no doubt about that. 
There's a lot of great venues in the Big East Conference. This building is one of the newer buildings, and it's an on-campus arena. It is a very, very tough place to play. And the reason that they have such a great home court advantage is not because of the building, despite how nice it is. It's because they got great players. And when you got great players, you got an advantage. That's a testament to uh, Jamie Dixon, the seventh year head coach. He has done some amazing things here with the Pitt Panthers program. Well, the biggest thing in attendance in the conference, of course, Syracuse leads the nation almost every year in the Carrier Dome. Louisville and Marquette are second and third in attendance in this conference. There's a foul out at center court on Koshwal, his third. And here's a look at the current home win streaks. Kansas, far and away the leader in the country with 49. Yeah, and Pittsburgh at 29. And they've had several of that length during the course of the last 11 years while Jamie has been here. They have lost 10 games in this building since it opened. It's amazing. Uh, it it really it? is. Yeah, it's amazing. And it didn't open last year. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that is the second personal foul on Tony Freeland. And the fifth on the Blue Demons with 15 minutes to go here in the second half. Pitt with a 14-point lead. Their biggest lead of the game came in the first half. It was a 16-point advantage in one juncture in this game. They are building depth also with this team. A lot of people didn't think Pittsburgh was going to be very good this year. Picked ninth in the 16-team league. I believe that they're going to be better than that. They lost a lot, and that's what people think about when they think about Blair and Young and Levance Fields especially being gone. But these guys are playing very, very good. Nice steal by Wallace. Koshwall finishes in transition. Nice play for the Blue Demons. He can run, and he's got a lot of skill. He's not as good with his back to the basket as he is facing and in transition. Six now for Koshwall, who's playing with three fouls. And here is a foul on Jeremiah Kelly, his first. Don't forget, men's college hoops continuing Tuesday night with a doubleheader first at 7. You're going to see LSU and Xavier from Cincinnati. Then at 9, Belmont taking on the aforementioned number one team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks. You'll see uh, Sharon Collins in that show. It should be a good doubleheader on the U tomorrow hey, night. Hey, Tasman Mitchell from LSU is the real deal. Scorer and rebounder. Very, very athletic. And, of course, Sharon Collins may be going to be first team All-American this year. He got a ring for all those Kansas guys a couple of years ago when he beat Memphis with that last second shot. His numbers this year very good. 4.3 assists and knocking them in from downtown is Sharon Collins. You'll see that tomorrow night on the U. We've got a timeout here in Kent. It's a 12-point lead for the Panthers. Lid lifter for DePaul at Pittsburgh back at the Pete and it is the second game with the full complement of players for Jamie Dixon's Panthers and even though the numbers for Dixon and Brown tonight are fairly modest you can tell that this is becoming a cohesive unit Bob Wenzel yeah and, and you know they move the ball very well their offensive efficiency is really good and you know so far it's six to five in the second half and the reason Pittsburgh is not scoring is because they're getting fouled in the first half, DePaul fouled seven times. DePaul has fouled seven times in the first five and a half minutes of the second half. Pitt can't get any shots off before DePaul is fouling them. Now that's going to mean they're going to go to the free throw a lot in the second half. Gibbs now with 16 as he hits both foul shots. And now driving Will Walker is fouled. And that's going to go against Trayvon Woodall. Second on Woodall. I like DePaul's aggression in the second half. Even though they're fouling a lot, their, their defensive aggression is making them more aggressive at the offensive end, especially Walker. I think he's feeling a little bit better. He's testing the fact that he had that high fever. He's looking to score more in this half. Walker driving around Gibbs. The leaner, a little strong. Wanamaker had the rebound, but has it taken away by Wallace. Three is off for Walker. Kept alive, Kelly, his shot no good. Contact underneath, and a foul here on Pitt. It's gonna go against Woodall again. 
Well, Kelly is not involved in the offense that much, but he's a guy who takes care of the basketball for Jerry Wainwright, makes sure they don't have a lot of turnovers. They only average 10 turnovers a game, Clay, and they've got nine in this game, so you got to credit the defense of Jamie Dixon for that, but normally they take care of the basketball very, very well. You know, when we were talking with Jerry Wainwright before the game, he, he, he led to uh, some insight about the turnover situation. Yeah, it's nice to have a low turnover number, but it also means that his team might not, on occasion, be aggressive enough. Well, that's right, and, and that's where, especially with Kelly. How about this? Koshwal, the quick hands. The big man with the slam. Wow, what an athletic move for the 6'10", 255-pounder. Well, we're seeing the, the aggression at the one end defensively leading to good aggression at the offense in the second half. An 11-point game now. You see the points off turnovers. Nice drive for Dante Taylor. He's got four. And now a whistle. And we've got a conversation between the officials. Let's go back to that DePaul steal. Well, jumping in the passing lane is very impressive, and going the length of the floor is even more impressive. The dunk is nice, but the step in on the defense and the ball handling, much more impressive for Matt Koshwal. He is a big man who is developing. He's a junior this year, has had a very good career at DePaul. Pat Driscoll, our referee, is uh, over at the table. And they're trying to iron something out. They're looking at clocks in the last shot. That's what we're being told. Well, right here, the dribble penetration and the dish. The ball goes through the basket. The shot clock should reset. See, and the shot clock is not running right now. You can see it's stuck at 35 as they're bringing the ball up the floor right here. So they've got to put a stopwatch on this and get the shot clock down a little bit. Dixon tried to call a timeout, and now Pitt is in its timeout with 13-13 to go here in the half. Watch Dixon. The He's drive, the dish. And right here, Jamie probably sees that the shot clock is not running. It is a shot clock issue, and I believe that they're looking at it again. Just so you know in the audience, what happens in situations like this, the television truck outside shows the official, and the officials see just what you're seeing in your picture right here. And as a result, they can make the determination. Look at the clock on the right-hand side. The basket goes in. The shot clock resets to 35. The ball goes in bounds, and the shot clock does not move. The game clock does not move. So they've got to take some time off both of those clocks. Officials right on it. Now, we may think to ourselves, so they've taken five seconds off the shot clock we may say geez what's the difference between five seconds but if the game was close at the end of the game you would hate for something for five seconds to matter there was a game between Butler and Xavier this year where the clock issue was just like this it was corrected and they got it right and that's what you have to be careful of they call football the game of inches basketball sometimes the game of tenths of seconds amen 13 point lead for Pitt Walker did not start because of the fever, has played quite a bit here tonight. And there is contact as Eric Wallace is going to go to the free throw line. First on Wanamaker. Eric Wallace, sophomore, 6'6". He's a transfer from Ohio State. He's got a very strong upper body. He's between a four-man and a three-man. And it's best for DePaul if he can become a three-man. Because they already have Koshwal as the five, and they have Devin Hill. So he can play both positions, but if he played the three, they'd have a big, strong front line. You can see he's been very quiet tonight, and his season troubles at the free throw line continue. Yeah, he averages eight points and almost six rebounds a game. Missed both free throws. He's now 18 of 57. Kept alive, and inside they go to Freeland. He's got six. Freeland's been a happy uh, guy off the bench so far, huh? Very, very active interior player. 
And almost a steal there for Stula. Gibbs double teamed and fouled. And now a little pushing and shoving there between Freeland and Gibbs. We have a good officiating crew. Notice how they jump in as something like that happens. Could go into something greater. They jump right in, in the middle. Right here. Freeland gets all over him. It's a foul. Gibbs trying to get the ball loose. Officials jump right in on it. You know, the other thing about officiating, the play before that where Stula was hanging all over his guy, they didn't call a foul because there was no change of possession. They, no advantage was gained or lost. Had the ball gotten loose, there was a lot of contact, they would have called a foul. That is where the judgment comes in with the guys in the striped shirts. Five points here in the second half for Gibbs. He's got 17 tonight. A block out on the free throw line. Very, very important. Gibbs has now hit 31 straight free throws. 93% coming into tonight at the line. Yeah, there's three guys in the Big East Conference that are in the 90s. He's one of them. School record for consecutive made at Pitt is 34, so he's closing in. Might see that tonight. 10 on the shot clock. Walker, high off the glass, got it to go with the right hand. Yeah, and that's the Walker that they want to see for 33 minutes a game mm -hmm. instead of just the second half. Fourth point of the half. He's got six now. DePaul staying close enough to keep it interesting. Well, they have fight, don't they? You know, I mean, they play hard. Nice backdoor, but Gilbert Brown can't finish. In transition, baseline jumper is up and in. First field goal for Eric Wallace. The bench has been great for DePaul, and the second half has been very, very good for the Blue Demons. Second timeout called in the half by Pitt. Well, they are getting a lot of quality shots in the second half. Right here, Walker with the dribble. Nice, softly laying this one in. That's what he normally does. He averages 16. And then on the break, after a good defensive play, the pull-up jumper right here. He knocks it in. And Paul is right back in the game. We mentioned three guys in the Big East Conference in the 90s in free throws. Tim Abramitis of Notre Dame and also Austin Freeman of Georgetown. Walker, he's back, huh? Missed the start tonight. That streak ends at 44 straight games for Walker, but certainly making an impact here, especially in the second half. It's a nine-point lead now for Pitt. Had 17 against Vanderbilt. He had 25 against St. Joseph's. He had 14 against Tennessee. Full court pressure now by the Blue Demons. Get it in the hands of the very dependable Ashton Gibbs. Here's Dixon now. Eyed by Koshwall. Well, they want to play pick and roll, but they're switching the screens. And as a result, the pick and roll is not available. You're better off going without the screen. Clock under 10. Gibbs for Dixon. Pass, a little strong, and it comes into the hands of Will Walker. Ill-advised pass by Dixon. Man looked like he was open, but by the time the ball got there, no way. Nice move by Kelly, splits the double team, and how about that roll? Pittsburgh's been falling asleep defensively the last couple of minutes. Lots of easy, good percentage shots by DePaul. First basket for Kelly, how about that? Wallace and Kelly, pointless up until the last two possessions. And now they're making some points, huh, with their play. And it's a seven-point lead for Pitt. Almost stolen away there by Kelly. Wow, DePaul has pulled within seven. A lot of time left, and maybe that 29-game home winning streak is in jeopardy. Point game in this Big East opener for these two teams. Meanwhile, the Big Ten looking to expand. And Pitt's name has been brought up. Jamie Dixon adamantly opposed. He said, I can't see how any team would improve where they're at by movement. And I can't see how moving from the best conference in college basketball history would be a good thing for anybody. 
your thoughts. Well, I think that's what Jamie should say. And um, of course, you know, when you're in the position of being a coach in a conference that's as successful as this conference, you don't want anything to spoil that. And of course, you're promoting your team and your conference all the time. So that kind of talk about changing does not help recruiting or anything like that. So uh, that's what you would expect. Now, those decisions are going to be made at the presidential level, not at the coaching level. Put back by McGee. No good, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line. Well, Jamie was right in some sense. Here's the ranked teams this week. Syracuse, West Virginia, Villanova, Connecticut, and Georgetown all in the top 13. Syracuse surprisingly there. Wesley Johnson vying for the Player of the Year award in college basketball, the transfer from Iowa State. Syracuse is a very, very happy team despite the loss of Johnny Flynn to the NBA. They're playing with two guards. Brandon Trish was the Rookie of the Week this week. And Scoop Jardine, they uh, are complimenting one another at that position. And they've got some strength inside, and they got Routen shooting a three. Syracuse has got it all. And of course, Pitt will play Syracuse on Saturday at the Carrier Dome. By the way, Jim Beheim also against the move. Of course, you know, Jim Beheim would like to stay where he is. And of course, for that game, I'm predicting they will have mm, 28,000 <laughs> for the Pitt Syracuse game at the Carrier Dome. They could blow the roof off that place. Rising up. No good. Wallace, again, he's been cool tonight. DePaul is out playing Pittsburgh in the second half. Scores 17 to 10 in the second half. There. Pittsburgh has not been efficient at all. Jermaine Dixon got that three. He's the most experienced guy, the guy you would think would take a shot at a critical time in the game. DePaul calls a timeout. They have one remaining here in the half. Well, the Big Ten would like to counter. Here are the conferences and how they are ranked in the top 25. The Big East and the ACC both are tied with five. The Big 12 with four. And of course, they've got number one and two with Kansas and Kentucky. The Big Ten and the SEC. There are five conferences with one each. So that's how it rounds out. Those are by the coaches vote. And coast to coast, Cornell from the Ivy League won the holiday festival. How about that? They beat St. John's. USC is not dead yet. They beat UNLV at the Diamond Head Classic. Kentucky wins their 2,000th game. How about that? Unbelievable. Did, uh, did you win more hockey games than that when you were playing? <laughs> North Carolina's closing in on 2,000. They're seven shy. They're going to get that this season. Hey Amen. How about John Wall at Kentucky? The dynamic point guard, the freshman, and then Patrick Patterson giving them everything they need inside. A lot going on in college basketball. All right, it's a 10-point game. That three by Jermaine Dixon, the first three for the Panthers in almost 13 minutes. They needed that one. They Indeed. Keep the ball at arm's length. There's Koshwall strong with the right hand. Wanamaker pulls it down, and just like that, the tide is turned again. Experience matters. Woodall inside. Robinson, no good. Wallace, the rebound. Yeah. Gilbert Brown and Robinson are sharing time at that small forward, big forward spot. Nice move and finish by Will Walker. Took it himself. Yeah. Walker averaged 16 last year, Clay. He's averaging 16 this year. Even though last year's season was a disaster, he was a right, a bright spot for DePaul and Jerry Wainwright last year with his scoring. The only senior for DePaul has six here in the half. Wanamaker has it swatted out of there by Wallace. It's too early in the possession to go that quickly. When you don't move the defense, the help side is there. Now Wallace knocks it out on the baseline. And DePaul will keep it. Wanamaker is slow to get up. And uh, he's going to stay on the floor, but he went down pretty hard on the other end. Well, he goes right here. Hits his head on the knee of Kelly. Banged his head a little bit, but he's staying in there. 8.15 to play. Walker's got a quick first step, doesn't he? That is hard to guard. Here's Stula. Gives it for Koshwal. Nice spin. The Wanamaker is there to clear it. McGee is guarding Koshwal one-on-one. -on -one. When you don't have to double team, everybody can stay at home. Your defense becomes more effective. Off the heel, no good for Dixon. Kept alive by McGee. He's getting better and better and better. 
big, strong, physical. Banged with Dwan Blair all last year in practice. He had to learn a lot from that. Here we go, the break. Trayvon Woodall has got eyes everywhere. The drive right here and the miss. Notice the position. Right in the right place is McGee, and he powers the ball to the basket. Big guys, when the ball is in the air, you do your work. So when the ball comes to you, it becomes easy to score. Now McGee has had trouble hitting free throws tonight, but when they need his muscle, his size, his stature, man, it... He positions well. Yes. You know, the ball is in the air. He puts his body against somebody, knocks the guy under the basket, gets those tough points, three for four. He's shooting 72% from the year. He's not disappointing in this game. Averages seven and seven. He's on his way to that average. Very productive player, and he's going to have to be productive when they play Syracuse next. Onuwaku and Rich Jackson are two very strong interior players. And Pitt keeps it to a double-digit lead. It's a 10-point game, seven and a half to go here in Pittsburgh. Opening game of the Big East season for both of these teams. When somebody sets a screen, you can switch or you can hedge. Walker's drive stripped, loose in the corner. And last touch by Dixon, and we've got a timeout. 7-18 to go here at the Pete. DePaul keeping it close. DePaul has never beaten Pitt in Big East play. They're 0 for 5 against the Panthers, but they're within 10 here with 7-18 to go. Benz College Hoops continues tomorrow night. We've got a great doubleheader for you. LSU and Xavier from Cincinnati. That starts at 7. Then Belmont against the number one team in the land, Sharon Collins and the Kansas Jayhawks. And, and Belmont is no slouch. No, two years ago, NCAA, they took Duke to the wire. And if you are watching that game, keep an eye out for Vince Gill. He is the number one fan of Belmont. He has had every single one of their games when he's not on tour. One of my favorite musicians. He's a Excellent. nice guy. I met him two years ago, and uh, he loves Belmont basketball. Actually, saw him at the Grand Old Opera. How about this Stula guy coming off the bench? He's in double figures for DePaul. Hasn't missed a shot. Ten points now for Stula. He averages two points a game. Played a lot last year. Limited minutes this year, but earning it right now. Eight-point game. Under seven to go. They set up Wanamaker, long three, around and out. Rebound, Koshwal. Right now, it's all on the perimeter for Pitt. Walker for Wallace. Stula. Kelly for three. Loose in the corner, it's going to belong to Pitt. You know, Pitt's style is not the type of style that blows people away by 30 or 40 points. They're a half-court, stingy defensive team. They work the clock to get a good shot, and they take it whenever they can get it. And, of course, last year they had the most intimidating presidents in, in college basketball in Dewan Blair and an absolutely fantastic clutch player in Sam Young. So these guys on the floor right now are all trying to find their roles with Pittsburgh. They haven't played a real tough schedule other than Texas early in the early going. They should have confidence because they're 10 and 2. So they're developing their roles as the season goes on. Wanamaker's been 0 for 5 in his last five shots. DePaul's bench has been outstanding in this game. Just over six minutes to go. Dixon. In and out. And another rebound for Wallace. DePaul's formula for success is try to keep the ball, try to keep the score in the 50s and the low 60s. I'm not sure they're going to get that right now. They almost beat Tennessee when they were playing at their best earlier in the year when no one was injured or sick. Three. Big, big, big by Will Walker. I think somebody got a hand on that basketball. His first three, he's got 11, and we've got a five-point game with five and a half to go. Okay, so where does Pittsburgh go? Jermaine Dick, it's an equal opportunity kind of offense. Gibbs would be uh, the guy from the outside, and then Wanamaker and um, Dixon are the guys who would be slashing to the basket. Gibbs is fouled by Kelly. Kelly didn't think so. And he's going to pick up his second. 
Well, a little bit of Will Walker right here. The hedge. Somebody almost got a hand on it. Dixon challenged it nicely. Walker made it anyway. That is a big time shot right there. So Gibbs goes to the line. He's got 18 points. Walker's a thousand point scorer in his career at DePaul. Boy, this game uh, could come down to free throws yet. Indeed. And oddly enough, DePaul shooting well from the free throw line in this game. Normally one of their things they don't do well. Ashton Gibbs above his average by three. Got them both. His fifth 20 point game of the year for Mr. Gibbs. Only a sophomore from Seton Hall Prep in New Jersey. And this crowd coming to life really for the first time in this half. Walker. Lost his dribble, tried to get it to Kosh while stolen away. Wide open Wanamaker, his three is off the mark. And Koshwall with the clear. First turnover in 11 minutes. For DePaul on that last possession. This one is swatted away as Kelly drives in, taken off his hand by Taylor. You can feel the intensity level getting up. That is Brandon Knight, the assistant coach, also went to Seton Hall Prep, was a great, great point guard here before Levance Fields and Carl Krauser. Nice and Gibbs move. going right where he left off, huh? Nice move there by Walker, but a touch there with the right hand. Four and a half to go. Five guys on the perimeter right here. Taylor, the novice in the paint. Brown goes down hard there. Is Stool is going to pick up the personal. That's his third. This was a hard foul right here. The drive right here by Brown. He gets his shoulder so he can't go up with the basketball. Apologetic right away. Not Gibb. too good from the free throw line so far as the rest of the group, huh? One for eight. Ashton is the only one making his. It's a big one for Brown. Brown first point of the second half. Again, only his second game back after that long academic suspension, missed 11 games. He's still getting his sea legs. Oh, no doubt about it. He, he didn't practice with the team. Last season averaged a little over five a game and about three rebounds, was a part-time player. That helps. It gets it back to a nine-point lead. There is Walker. He's sitting out getting some fluids. Again, didn't start tonight because of a high fever. Pittsburgh is not switching any screens between big men and small men. They're hedging instead. The big man steps out, and the guard's supposed to catch up with his guy. They would be well advised when Walker is in the game to switch on him. Kelly. Wallace. Gibbs with the rebound. Point guards should rebound well, because their guy usually doesn't go to the offensive glass. Torrey Jackson, another great rebounding point guard of Notre Dame in this conference. An empty possession for DePaul, and that was a big possession. Wallace now one for nine. Wanamaker, nice pass. Dixon the finish. Experience to experience. Dixon with 10, and it's back to an 11 point lead. They work it inside. Koshwall falling away. Well, Koshwall has an easier time against Dante Taylor than he does against McGee. Dante Taylor is a talented young player. He's only a freshman learning how to play post defense. Right now, good experience on the floor right now with Dixon Wanamaker, Gibbs in there, and Gilbert Brown. That's the most experienced exterior on this squad. 10 on the shot clock, Wanamaker has it. Under three to go. Nine point lead for the Panthers. Gibbs to Dixon with three on the shot clock. No good. Bad shot. And Koshwell the easy rebound. Well, Koshwell credited everything. He switched out on that, so Gibbs had no look. They forced a bad shot by their switching D. Kelly, top of the key. Boy, that would have been huge for DePaul, but there is Dixon. They got to get Walker back in the game. They gave him a little rest. Walker is at the table right now, ready to come back in. Now pay attention to DePaul's defense. On any kind of screens, they're going to switch. 
They switch ball screens, takes away the effectiveness of a guy like Gibbs. Watermaker. Gibbs. Yes! He doesn't need a screen! Measure that! 23 points for Gibbs, and the final timeout burned by Jerry Wainwright. Big time by Ashton Gibbs. That might be the haymaker. Clutch situation, he came up big. The ball fake gets the defense off him, and he gets a clean shot. Look at that beautiful rotation. That, my friends, is a thing of beauty. Ashton Gibbs can shoot. 35% three-point shooter coming into the game. He is three of four from outside the arc tonight. Wainwright and DePaul out of timeouts. DePaul in the second half played much, much better than they did in the first half. The fast break, the two best players, Walker and Koshwal, very, very much involved. Walker is now back in the game. They were getting clean shots on the break, taking the ball to the basket. But Pitt's defense stiffened, as it usually does. And when it did, they got some distance between them and the Blue Demons again. Reminder, this is the uh, Big E season opener for these teams. Jerry Wainwright and DePaul went 0 for 18 last season. They were hoping to get out to a great start with an upset on the road tonight. Meanwhile, Pitt trying to extend that home court winning streak to 30 games. Yeah, and they're trying to go to 11 and 3 and win their first Big East game. Pittsburgh's got three away games at Syracuse, at Cincinnati, at UConn. Next three games. That's why this is such a tough league. There's Walker back in, as you mentioned, Bob. Working against Dixon. A little strong. Taylor the rebound. Dante Taylor, some quality minutes in this game for Pitt. Yeah, and I'm surprised he's in there right now, frankly, because McGee is a much better defensive player. Koshwal is a guy that they should be going to. Walker back in. I'm sure he's going to go for the, uh, take the basketball on the dribble. It's the fifth rebound. A lot of Dante time off Taylor. the clock right here, right? Gibbs, three. Uh, trying to follow it up there was Brown. Loose on the floor. Koshwal comes out of the pile with it. Just over a minute to go. Here's Kelly now. He'll lob it in for Koshwal. Back for Kelly. Eyeing the three. They need this one. Around and out. And Brown with another big rebound. Yeah, well, Pittsburgh did a great job when it mattered most. When DePaul closed, it looks like they were going to get right back into the game. Big shots came up. Wanamaker, Gibbs. Dixon all got involved in that stretch of, of where they opened it up again. And as a result, they're in position right now to close it out. Well, Jerry Wainwright gutted his coaching staff during the offseason, including letting his son Scott go. A lot of people think Jerry Wainwright's job will be on the line this season. There's Dixon with another deuce. He's got 12, so a tough start on the road tonight for DePaul, even though at times showed great tenacity. Yeah, they really did. And, and, you know, this is a new year. They can't be thinking about what happened last year. They ended the season by beating Cincinnati, at least, in the Big East tournament. So they've got to concentrate on the now. Tapped out of bounds. Six seconds to go. So Pitt is going to go to 11 and 2 overall. DePaul will fall to 7 and 6. DePaul next plays Georgetown, another ranked team to start their Big East Conference season. And of course, Greg Monroe of Georgetown shown that he is one of the supreme big men in the nation, and Koshwal will be matching up with him. You know, the Hoyas got out to a great start, but then they lost that game to Old Dominion before Christmas. Still a well, it's good. a rite of passage. They lose to Old Dominion every year <laughs> in McDonough Gym. It's the only game they play on campus, usually in the MCI Center. So it's sort of like an away game for Georgetown when they play on their own campus. And of course, Austin Freeman doing a great job. Chris Wright had 34 against Harvard, so he'll be matched up in all likelihood with Walker. DePaul just three points in the final five minutes and 41 seconds. That does the Blue Demons in. Jamie Dixon now second all time in career coaching victories at Pitt. He is tied for that mark.
65-52 the final as Pitt led by Ashton Gibbs and his 23 points open up Big East play with a victory. When we come back we'll hear from Ashton Gibbs and the head coach 65-52 the final here in Pittsburgh. Great start at home for the Pitt Panthers as they open Big East play with a 65 52 win over DePaul. That home winning streak goes to 30 games. Jamie Dixon, the head coach of the Panthers, is with Bob Wenzel. Coach Dixon, your thoughts about this game in your home opener in the league? Well, it's a good way to get a start. We know how tough this league is, and uh, it's good to get off to a 1 0 start. Uh, we did some good things. I, I think we could have played better, but uh, they battled, they made shots, and uh, uh, I think uh, we've got some things to improve on. But uh, we know that, and we're, we're getting better. We're going to talk about Ashton in a minute, but talk a little bit about the fact that you have Dixon and Brown now and what that means to your team. Well, they're still kind of fitting in. I mean, Gilbert's not close. I mean, he, you know, he thinks he remembers what we were doing defensively. He doesn't. I mean, he was lost out there a number of times. Uh, we got to improve. On, uh, we know that. Jermaine's getting better. And uh, we just got to have uh, – uh, we seem to get in some runs where we don't execute as well as we need to. And we're going to learn from it and then get better for it. So I thought Ashton played really well, uh, really played real patient, let things come to him and took good shots. So uh, we got some good performance but we got to get better. Tell me a little bit. You know, last year, your 31 wins. You're an eyelash from going to the Final Four. You lose Blair, and you lose Young, and you lose LeVance Fields and, and Tyrell Biggs. Now these players have uh, some new roles to play, don't they? Well, yeah. I mean, and these are good players. It's just that uh, we're playing behind good players as well. So uh, they're getting better. And uh, again, uh, we had some guys out, so we got to get used to putting them in the rotation and, and getting guys in the right spots. And uh, we've got to learn from uh, what we did today. We had some good things to learn from, but we had some things that we can learn from some mistakes. So uh, we'll, we'll get better for it but uh, they're getting better they're young uh, but uh, you know not, I told them they're not young anymore I mean we're, we're in second semester now so uh, it's uh, we move freshmen to sophomores and sophomores to juniors and juniors to senior good way to approach right. it thanks coach okay, appreciate thanks. it Ashton nice game man thanks a lot well, what, what you know I, I didn't think you could put the ball on the floor and do those pull-ups I know you're a great three-point shooter tell me about those shots uh, well that's something I worked on this summer and uh, I did I did a great job of uh, I think working out and uh, my coaches did a great job of helping me uh, with my confidence and uh, it's paying off I see. Well last year you led the league in three point shooting and of course that was in a secondary role this year you're the lead scorer on this team. Talk to me about the difference of the defense that you get being the primary scorer instead of a secondary scorer. Well since I'm a shooter uh, of course defense is close out on me tough so that's what the uh, mid range game and just uh, shot fake pull ups are, uh, are there for and Coach Dixon has been stressing that to uh, shot fake and go to the basket. And I think uh, I've been doing a good job of that. Well, you've been having a great year so far. Now, let's think about the uh, next game that you're going to play. It's going to be at the Carrier Dome. You went to Seton Hall Prep. You know all about the Big East your whole life. Tell me about playing up there and what you think that's going to be like. Uh, it's a tough place to play. Uh, great atmosphere, and uh, they're a great team coached by a uh, great coach as well. So uh, it's going to be a tough game for us. But if we play hard, uh, we, we can do anything. Congratulations on a great game. I'm looking forward to watching you this year. All right, thank you. Take care. Back to you, Clay. All right, Bob. 23 points for Gibbs, his fifth 20-plus point game. And he was also 6-for-6 six six at the line. He's hit 33 straight at the strike. That's one shot of a team record. Back to wrap it up after this. We told you this was a tough place to win if you're coming in as an opponent. And Pittsburgh now has won 30 straight in this building. 65-52 the final in the Big East opener. Alongside Bob Wenzel, I'm Clay Matvick. And Bob, what impressed you the most about the Panthers tonight? When it got tough, when it looked like DePaul was maybe going to get over the hump, they passed the ball, they shared the ball, and the most experienced guys took the shots. That showed me a lot. Gibbs made an open jumper. Wanamaker took the ball to the basket and dished. And Jermaine Dixon got involved in that time, too. So they're, we know they're going to be locked down defense, but the offensive end is a little shaky sometimes with them. But during that stretch, they really executed well. As far as you can tell, is this going to be a better season for DePaul? Yes, DePaul's better than they were last year. I don't think there's any question about that. What they have to do is mentally erase last year, forget about the fact we keep reminding them they didn't <laughs> win a game in the Big East last year, and go from there and try to play as tough as they possibly can play. Once again, our final score in this Big East opener, Pitt 65 to Paul 52 for Bob Wenzel and our entire ESPNU crew. I'm Clay Matvick. Coming up next, it's the 2010 Outback Bowl Preview Show. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com.
The proceeding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. So long for Pittsburgh.